So I'm gonna talk about like, start breaking down things in a little bit more snippets uh, rather than doing, not saying that I'm not gonna do any long videos anymore. I'm just saying that we're gonna break things down into snippets and, and dive a little bit into program design. Now, I've done a bunch of podcasts on uh, R7 method. So what I wanna talk about today is just a little bit of breaking down the structure of training sessions, okay? And like I said, I've talked about this before. This is kind of another model uh, that if you guys follow Joe DeFranco and Smitty, um, and they really align really, really well. But here's the thing, the R7 is, is something that Mike Robertson created. It's just a filter of looking through a training session and saying, hey, do I have all of this in it, right? So R1 is release. Release is things like soft tissue work, things like, um, like any type of soft tissue modality that, you know, whether for, for us it might be body tempering, uh, vibrational, you know, like I said, tech, foam rollers, lacrosse balls, uh, like you name it, right? Any of that is gonna fall in here. When somebody comes in, they're wound up. I mean, it might be, like I said, hyper, we got hypervolt rice, you know, I would say guns to, to reduce the stiffness and some soft tissue. Resets are gonna be things like breathing, positional re resets, like DNS, uh, dynamic neuromuscular stabilization. It's pretty much like, hey, turn some stuff on, turn some stuff off, right? But when somebody comes in, like we wanna do some of those things, uh, whether it's crawl patterns, whether it's SFMA rolls, whether it's like PRI things, right? And we're not gonna spend a ton of time on it. Think of it like, you know, in a release phase, five, maybe 10 minutes. It also depends on like how much time you have in a training session. Um, you know, resets, usually a couple of drills. Uh, you know, yeah, sometimes when somebody's in a rehab phase, we might do more of that. But it's, it, once again, we're not spending 20 minutes on a, on a uh, warm up, especially in a training session if we only have so much time. Right, and from there we go to ready readiness, right? Readiness is kind of like the ramp. It's the dynamic warm-ups, right? So we go from kind of single joint to multi-joint. We go from slow uh, to fast, right? We go to uh, simple to complex. And you guys have seen me do a lot of dynamic warm-ups. And you know, some of this might include things like uh, FRC cars, right? Where we're just, you know, doing shoulder cars or we're doing thoracic mobility or we're doing, you know, I would say hip cars, things like that. Okay, to something that's a little bit more compound, like squat to stand with a walkout, side lunge with overhead reach, uh, you know, moving into things like skipping and, and movement prep, okay? Now, all of those, like I said, that, that, full, that kind of fits into the pre-movement prep. In R7, we have release, reset, readiness, right? It's just organizing that. Like, it's important, I think, to organize, um, especially to me, this is kind of like, hey, it, you know, if you want to have a cookbook, here's a cookbook for creating programs. And like I said, you know, one of the things I'm gonna do is uh, create a course just around program design because I feel like there's, there, there's so much to cover and, and, and like I said, you can't just do it in short videos, but these snippets, I wanted to kind of show uh, some stuff that you can really, really work on, okay? From there, we have reactive. Reactive is like basically, you know, anything that's power, speed, agility, rate of force development, um, you know, starting strength. I would put, but mostly like the elasticity part of things. Jumps, throws, sprints, hops, right? It's reactive stuff, but also it, it is um, neural primers, right? So I think these are good. These are actually part of warmups. So think about things like, you know, uh, dyna ball or jam ball slams, um, exp you know, bench plyo push-ups, you know, medicine ball throws against the wall, hops, jumps, things of that nature. And sometimes we'll use these just to prep the nervous system to then have the best training session, right? Um, now, one thing about reactive, okay? Like, if you're training, uh, first of all, we train uh, high-level athletes from NFL, NBA, fighters, all, all uh, you know, things like that. But most of our, I would say, clients are, uh, I say, general population looking to feel, look, perform better. Uh, and we'll plug this in for everybody, okay? How much of that you do? Well, that's dependent on their goals and a lot of different things. And, fitness levels and whatnot. But um, I, would, I would say put, as, you know, put it in for everybody. And maybe for uh, somebody that's in their 60s or 70s, that might be you know, foot fire. I'm gonna do my like, quick foot fire. So foot fire is very safe, right? It might be slamming stuff. It might be hopping, nothing uh, crazy. It might be you know, pushing the prowler fast, something like that, right? But we're gonna put it in there. Now, when it comes to athletes and even general population, what we tend to do it's something called, you know, are you a static proficient athlete or a dynamic proficient athlete? Uh, and just to make that really, really, really simple, um, it's like, hey, are you strong, but you don't have that elasticity? And like a really extreme example of that is a power lifter that, 
you know, can squat a thousand pounds, but they can't jump high. They can't res respond and react fast, right? That's probably a static proficient athlete. What's a dynamic proficient athlete? You've probably gone to the gym where you got a pretty skinny kid, you know, their Achilles attaches super high on, a, on, a, uh, on their calf, like their calf is up here. And you know, they just have a longer elastic band and they're weak, but man, when they, when they do a run up and jump, their vertical's crazy, right? So that's probably a dynamic proficient athlete. And then you got people in between. I'm kind of like somewhere in between, right? And so if you're a static proficient, we're gonna do more reactive stuff and put more of that into your program, right? If you're a very, very dynamic proficient, we're probably gonna do less of this, right? And because you're gonna get the bigger benefit from getting stronger, putting on muscle and so on and so forth. So this is kind of more in the athlete realm, but I wanted to, to share that because, hey, not one size fits all. While we wanna have readiness for, uh, or say reactive for everybody, it, how much of it you put in obviously is very, very dependent. From there we go to resistance, so that's R5, okay? Now, to me, the, like this kind of encompasses strength training, supplement, supplemental exercises, accessory work, you know, hypertrophy muscle building work, core training, um, and essentially that's kind of like the program design part of, of a training session. And I'm gonna move down here in a second and show you guys a, a, a template, I say a template because there's different ways to do this, but this is certainly one that can be very beneficial. And so let's let's look at uh, this, and I'll talk about some uh, some changes that you can make here. But power, you know, we're starting with a power primer, and like power primers are things like uh, think hamstring, you know, Swiss ball hamstring curls or banded hamstring work or foam roller hamstring rollout before you do your main foundational strength-based movement like a squat. So if we're doing some type of squat, I might do some power priming with my hammies, right? That's an example. From there, we have foundational strength-based movement. Now, a great example here is two training sessions. You guys uh, might have, uh, I would say, see me doing a belt squat as my primary strength movement in my lower body day yesterday, okay? Uh, and I went really, really heavy, but that is very joint friendly for me. And, and I'll come back to that and talk about that in a little bit. And while today training um, Jordan Simmons, uh, Simmons from the Seahawks, we did safety, uh, the transformer safety bar box squats, right? Which uh, just, to, uh, this is, like I said, a third phase of progressions for him. Both are squats. That was our foundational strength-based movement, uh, but a different, like same pattern, different, I would say, uh, different exercise. Now, once again, look, it, that could have been a front squat. That could have been a double kettlebell squat, belt squat, uh, cambered bar squat, safety bar squat, box squat, right? You notice there's a lot of different, notice I didn't even say back squat, regular back squat, could be a duffalo bar back squat. So we got so many different things that we can do here. Uh, and, and like we'll rotate single leg work for squats here as well. But my point is, you have a foundational strength-based movement. After that, you'll have a primary hypertrophy, which is muscle building, and or supplement-based movement. Now, this depends on what's the main goal. Is the main goal to get stronger, or do we wanna have a mix, right? Uh, this template right here is a good mix of strength, hypertrophy, right? For somebody that wants to, almost, almost like this is a good general population uh, uh, template. Um, I would say it's good for athletes too, but it's a good general, general uh, population template. So you have a primary hypertrophy um, supplement-based exercise. So let's, let, let's look at an example, right? If our, if our primer was, uh, let's say our primer was a lap pull-down, right? A banded lap pull-down. So we're in a hinge position, right? We use, we use that as a primer, right? To get the lats, to get the hammies, to get everything uh, fired up. And then our foundational strength movement would be uh, a trap bar deadlift, for instance, right? Because it's strength-based, we're gonna be somewhere in the three to six rep range. Sometimes, sure, we'll do singles sometimes, but like that's usually kind of where we, where we stay at, three to six. Then our primer might be a dumbbell Bulgarian split squat, and that might be like in the six to eight rep range if we wanna kind of focus on strength more, or it might be like the eight to 12 rep range if we wanna work on hypertrophy muscle uh, uh, and, and build muscle a little bit more, right? From there we have a possible secondary hypertrophy or assistance exercise. Now, what might that be? It depends, but in this scenario, 
that might be a RDL, a barbell or a dumbbell RDL, right? Where this is gonna be, is gonna assist the main lift because maybe the person has weaker hamstrings. So we're gonna, like the supplement exercise kind of almost mimics the movement pattern of, so if you look at a trap bar deadlift, right? And I'm in a, in a cinch position. If I'm doing a Bulgarian split squat, okay? And I'm kind of in that same position because I can, I can adjust how I, how I lift in the uh, Bulgarian split squat. Okay, and then accessory work might be hamstrings because we wanna bring the hamstrings up a little bit, okay? So now you kinda of start seeing how this comes together. From there we have primary metabolic stress, okay? Now we can do a lot of stuff here, but let's say this person wants to build their backside more, their glutes, their hamstrings. So we might do something like a hip thrust drop set, right? Metabolic, because we're gonna do 10 reps and hold the top for five seconds. Rest for 10 seconds, do eight. Right, or we might, might do something really, really high rep in the 20, 25 rep range and make it more metabolic stress, stress oriented. From there, we have a stretch based movement. So this might be like a quasi ISO hold, which I love things, like I said, uh, that could be a squat, but I love Bulgarian split squat ISO holds. Um, for that, from there, postural dependent finisher, I put a question mark in there, because once again, how much time do you have? Is that the best thing to insert there? But what's, what's a postural dependent finisher? What's, that's something like farmer's walks, right? Heavy, heavy, heavy farmer's walks, uh, rack walks. There's a lot of different exercises that we can plug into that, but that would be one. And then from there, cardio, right? Your energy system training. And you can see how that plugs into there, right? Because resilience, we have metabolic conditioning, energy system training in there, and that fits into the training session, okay? Now this could be like, a, I'm a big fan of, for myself, of, you know, four day a week training conjugate. So, Max effort lower body, max effort upper body, dynamic effort lower body, or you know rep effort upper body. And I'll, I'll move into that as far as what I, uh, why I just like it and it will kind of work off of that conjugate model because it fits this very, very well. Okay, but that's, that's a cookbook, right? That's a little bit of a template that you can use. Now, of course, you can go like, hey, Luca, there's a lot of variations. Absolutely there is. Absolutely there is. And, one, you know, one of the ones that uh, I've talked about quite a, quite a bit, and me and, me and uh, Jay Ferruja talk a, a lot about this, is, you know, to, to make things more joint friendly, moving your main strength-based movement a little further down, maybe as the second or third exercise. Like, the world will not fall apart. A lot of people that we train, including myself in certain phases, I might do something, you know, if this was up, upper body day, I wouldn't do the barbell bench press first. I might do the dumbbell bench press first. Right? I might do a primer, a dumbbell bench press first, and then once the joints are nice and lubricated, feeling great, muscle tension's there, the third exercise might then be a floor press or a Cadillac bar, you know, bench press or something like that, right? So I just wanna throw in some stuff so that you guys get some kind of insights on the thought process, getting a little bit of this kind of, uh, I would say, um, template of how to build a program for yourself. Um, and of course, look, for most people, for most people, uh, they only have so much time. So we're gonna put conditioning in at the end of the workout. You know, is it good to have it on separate days? Absolutely, but look, if somebody's coming to see uh, us three days a week, and they're like, hey, look, I don't have a ton of time to do conditioning on these other days. Well, we're gonna start plugging it in at the end of the workout. If they can do it on another day, yep, absolutely, we'll do it. And the really simple, easy thing here to do is like, and I've, I've uh, done a whole video an hour long plus video about energy systems, which I hope you watched, okay? And like I mentioned there, I like a good mix of uh, anaerobic, lactic, which is like really short bursts, like seven, eight, 10, 10 seconds. You know, think like sprint for 10 seconds as fast as you can or push a, you know, a lighter sled super fast as possible. Uh, you know, something really high intensity for 10 seconds, that's it. And then have a longer break, like a 50 second break. Right? Most people don't work that energy system. And then you have your anaerobic glycolytic, which is, these are all long, like these are, you know, things that are 60 to 90 seconds long, um, but high, much higher intensity. A lot, a lot of times this falls in the line with a lot of what, you know, high intensity interval training is, is kind of marketed at, right? Like circuits and work hard and whatnot. Um, and then some of it is the uh, aerobic threshold. And I talked about how important that is. And I actually do like that to be done more often because those are like, you know, lower heart rates, longer periods of time, it builds your aerobic base, which is very, very important. And, but we'll kind of mix that in, in, in the programs through that. And then towards then you got recovery and like recovery rehab exercises. 
you know, we'll kind of like to get people wound down before they leave, whether it's breathing. Once again, well, do we put them on some soft tissue tools? Do we do some rehab work that's like really low intensity and kind of brings them down a little bit, right? And you notice how R7 kind of really aligns with this format too, okay? So that kind of gives you a framework because like I said, you want to have a lens to look at a program and go like, okay, do I have these components in there? And of course, you know, what's really like the thing that we didn't touch on, which is the most important part, but it's just like finding out what the person wants, okay? And what the person needs. And so real quick, um, I, I'm, I drew this pyramid. This is from, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's from, from Jody's uh, special strength. But you kind of have this kind of, this pyramid, right? And the reason why I wanted to bring it up is because most people jump the gun, okay? Now, yes, this is more about athletic performance, but I promise it, it plays into program design for, for anybody, to be, to be honest with you. So at the bottom here, you have, at the bottom of the pyramid, you have recovery, right? So that's the re restoration block. And those are things like nutrition, hydration, mobility, aerobic training that we mentioned already, right? Sleep, recovery, breathing techniques, supplements, right? And that is, those are so important because it's a part of the foundation. Uh, a lot of times, like I said, we talk about training and restoration and recovery is not in place and so you can't get the best results. Uh, a level up from that is breathing and you're like, whoa, hold up, there's a whole block in breathing? Yes, absolutely. So what is breathing? Well, soft tissue and soft tissue because if you breathe, uh, if you're a stress breather, you usually are very wound up, you're toned. Right? You have muscles that are on all the time, even if you don't train, and that's usually gonna lead to some tweaks and injuries and soft tissue getting damaged. So it addresses soft tissue. Uh, posture and position, I always say like own the position. You have to be in a specific position and be able to breathe normally to own that position. So that's what we test. If people can't breathe in certain positions, they're not ready to do that work. And I'll just give you a super simple example, right? Like, if you're in, under a barbell squat and you can't get the right position and then breathe full, in, full exhalation, full inhalation into that 360, kind of that belt, we're gonna take you away from that and get you, get you a better uh, exercise, which might be the double kettlebell squat, protraction, because now I'm in a better position, and get you to breathe. So posi uh, posture and position, intra-abdominal pressure. Teaching people how to create intra-abdominal pressure, 360 degrees, so important, right? It's, it's, it's like your natural safety belt when you're, when you're deadlifting heavy, when you're squatting heavy, when you're doing any type of exercise that has a lot of, I would say, tension, right? So if you're here, you can't create intra-abdominal pressure, right? Now, when you're in a better position, it's easier to do it, but you still gotta teach it, right? So we got things like that. We have bracing, right? Bracing techniques, like teaching people like, okay, now that you are in a good position, you got your breathing now, now brace, okay? Yes, most people do not know how to do that. So these are fundamentals. From there we go to movement quality. These are our functional positions, our motor control, our mobility, um, slow eccentrics. Like, hey, can you, can somebody get, take a squat and super slow eccentrics, right? Super slow. This is motor control. Can I go very, very, very slow? Every single part of this, super, super, super smooth. I don't know if you guys are enjoying this. Like, you know, what is this guy doing, right? But here's the thing, most people can't do that. They'll kind of start going down and like, just kind of be bouncy around or shifting around because they don't have that movement quality and that motor control, right? Then you have things like isometrics, which I love because they're very, very safe. Isometrics are just like, hey, can you hold this position, right? Can you hold these static lunge positions? They're safe, they still work strength, and they build that movement quality. And um, what else do we have there? Coordination, coordination, proprioception. Hey, can somebody, you know, can you stand, stability, can you stand on one leg, right? Can you slowly go into a single leg position here? Can you do this, right? Can you do certain movement patterns? So that's, that's movement quality. Now, the reason why I say this is like, Hey, are you gonna make somebody do something complex and throws and sprints where this is not in check? No. Now the cool thing is that you can work on a lot of these things at the same time. From there we go to fundamental movement patterns and also I put here unstructured movement patterns. Unstructured is stuff like play, flows, and you guys see me do a lot of flows, mobility flows, right, where I'm downward dog to this, to, to that, to side lunge, to right, doing ninja stuff. And that's, that's play, so that's unstructured movement patterns. That, that's part of fundamental movement too. 
And then we have our fundamental movement patterns. And that's our push, pull, our hinge, our squat, our lunge, our step, right? Our carry, our drags, our, all that stuff, right? And so we wanna have really high quality. And I'm, I'm a big stickler for excellence in every rep, okay? So we drill the crap out of this. And somebody, like for instance, I've been training for, it'd be 25 years, right? Have I, have, am I, do I do perfect rep every time? No, right? So I'm gonna keep drilling that because we want this highest standards. From there we go strength and conditioning. So that's our GPP, general physical preparation, you know, uh, general strength, absolute strength, you know, how much can you lift and things of that nature. We have our muscle building hypertrophy. We have our muscular endurance, right? Those properties that land in there, okay? From there, from there we go to power and speed. So power and speed, we got our starting strength, right? So starting strength is like, how fast can I explode out of the block, for instance, or go from zero to 100? Our explosive strength, our acceleration, our rate of force development, our velocity, our speed, right? Um, strength, speed, speed strength, pure speed, absolute speed, agility, right? Agility is just a combination of starting th strength, deceleration, right, reacceleration. So all of those uh, fall into, uh, I would say, power and speed. And then we have special strength, which is stuff like kicks, chaos training. Chaos is, uh, let's say I'm, um, I don't know, let's say Tyler was gonna uh, make me, like wherever he points, right, that's where I have to go. Like, so I have to react, right, it's chaotic. Somebody bumps me and I have to be able to respond to that, right? That's what that special strength is. Kick, kicking, punching, obviously it's a lot more, you know, if, if you've done any martial arts, you know, you can be really, really strong, but if you can't transfer it to that special strength, you know, you're not gonna do well in the sport. And then of course at the top is so specific physical preparation, that's the sport. That's your training, right? So if I'm a basketball player, that's my actual training, right? That's me going and, and playing games or practice sports specific, you know, dribble between the chair, pull up, you know, do that for, for drills. So, and you can see we have, at, when we look at these blocks, we have restoration, we have dynamic motor control, which a lot of times people don't focus on enough. We have our fundamental movement patterns and we have athletic performance. And a lot of times, you know, what you see is like this jump going straight into, you know, somebody wants to get better and it's like, all right, cool, let's do these, you know, depth jumps and throws and plyos and sports specific stuff. And this part is not taken care of. Now, the reason why I said that, like this is all the same stuff that comes here and here, whether your, your goal is to be leaner, put on some muscle mass, get stronger, be more explosive, be able to pick up the kids, you know, be able to go on an eight hour hike with no problem with a 40 pound backpack with your friends, you know, get out of pain, like stop, like deep, this, this matters, right? This matters, this training block. And I, this arrow, what it says here is, what do we have to take into account? Well, sporting age, training age. So sporting age is like, hey, how long have you played this sport and how deliberately, training age. Uh, hey, maybe you're, you know, maybe you are 25 years old, but your training age is one. You've never lifted a weight, you've never done any of that stuff, right? And then basically you have, you know, things like uh, uh, assessments, right? We just wanna assess where you're at with these things. Okay, so I wanted to touch on that because it really, really is important. Like training is, you know, when you help somebody transform, right? And go from kind of GPS point A to GPS point B um, from what they want. Like these are the things that we have to look at. And too many times we're just looking at reps, sets, you know, stuff like that. And we're not looking, looking at the big picture, okay? So I'm gonna finish off by going like, once again, there's so many ways to do this, but I like the idea. And like I said, we've used this so much, the conjugate system. You know, which was West Side, you know, and, and Louis Simmons kind of created that and then it's been molded in many different ways. But you have max effort method. So maximal effort method. So when, when I talk about breaking down uh, training into four days, and you can do three days, there's so many ways to do it. But let's say I'm doing, you know, yesterday I did a lower body maximum effort method. And that means that I'm gonna do one, at least one exercise to build maximum strength. And I did a belt squat and got, you know, got up to 400 and, and whatever, five, 410 pounds yesterday for a set of six, right? I was in that four to six range. And so that was my maximum strength. And then I did this, guess what I did? Hey, I did a supplement exercise. Like I did uh, double kettlebell squats. I did RDLs and as an accessory, right? I did uh, super heavy hip thrusts, right? And so I, I fit that into the mold, but that was max effort. If, if I did a max effort upper body day, uh, actually, in my current program, it, one of those is a floor press, right? So I'm doing a duffalo bar floor press, same thing. Dynamic effort method means that 
At there at the beginning, we're gonna focus on force production. Now that can be a lot of stuff. It can be, you know, box jumps with or without dumbbells, trap bar deadlift jumps. It can be band resistant squats or, or no, no bands, but just speed, right? Lighter weight, move it with speed. And then we can either move it, you know, we can do strength speed or speed strength. There's a lot of different ways that we can do this, but we are focusing that day at the beginning, the, the, the first part, we wanna develop that speed. And that's why it's called dynamic effort. And we can also do dynamic effort upper body, right? That might be a speed bench. It might be a med ball throw, right? There's, it might be scoop toss. As there's a lot of different things that we can do for the upper body to, make it, to do it, make it explosive. And then the third part is repetition effort method. And it is exactly what it sounds like, right? We're using loads of like 70, 75, 80%, and we're knocking out reps. Time at attention, more bodybuilding style, right? And to me, it's always like, now you can do all of those in one workout, or like I said, you can split and have different emphasis. So for a long time, one of my favorite splits have been, um, you know, max effort lower, max effort upper, dynamic effort lower, rep effort upper. But then we'll mix them out depending on what the, obviously the, the focus is. And you can do lower, upper, full. There's many, 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 many different ways. You can do full, full, full and, and stick to, I would say, um, a, a kind of template like this. But once again, you know, I definitely am gonna kind of dive in and do a course in a, a lot of different ways that we can do this. But I hope that some of this sh like gave you some tools how to categorize things and build your own programs and know what to put in there. Now, you know, when, when you look at found, th the one thing that I really, really want to encourage you to do is fit the exercises to you. I think we're at this point in time, you know, that you understand that like you can get stronger, you can build muscle and be smart, right? Be smart about the exercises that you choose. You will not see me doing a lot of back squats, not because I can't do them safely, because the risk to benefit ratio, once it gets heavy for me, is just not there. It's too risky based on my previous injuries. You won't see me do regular uh, deadlifts, but you're gonna see me do trap bar deadlifts. You're gonna see me do sumos elevated. I do uh, belt squat deadlifts, which are fantastic, right? Uh, a lot of RDLs, all those things, hip thrusts, all those things work for me really well. Squats, I love the front squat, double kettlebell squat belt squat, right? Safety bar squat, we'll do some of that. So once again, I'm fitting that to, uh, while paying attention to great form, excellent form, all those different things. Same thing on like, hey, should you barbell bench press? That's, uh, for a lot of people, no. You know, once you're in your 30s, if you've been training a lot, your, your shoulders are beat up, man, you can get a, you can get a safer bar, a duffel bar, a Cadillac bar. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm shouting out Kabuki strength a lot, but I love their stuff, right? You can do dumbbell bench press stuff, you can do neutral bars, you can do so many different things. You know, you can do Viking presses and landmines and you know, you name it. So once again, like being smart and fitting this to your, the, the things that you wanna achieve, but you know, beating up the muscles, but not the joints, right? That's gonna constantly be, be a theme that we wanna follow. And with that said, hey, every time I do this, I love getting the feedback from you guys of what you wanna see more of, what you want me to talk about, what tutorial videos you want me to do, uh, and, and I will do more of that. So with that, hey, drop a comment below. If you love it, share it. Let me know how you feel about it, what you wanna see more of. Coach Luca is out, and we will see you next time.